Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest into the show today. He is the ambassador to Israel, the ambassador of Israel to Canada, Dr. Ronan Hoffman, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for inviting me and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and uh, with the people who are listening to us. Awesome. Before we get started, I, I, I ask the, the, my, my very first question out of the gate for any guest that comes on my show, and you're no exception to this question, and this was not prepared because I like to get a, a, a frank conversation, is where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Actually, I have to say that it comes from um, from my home, from uh, from my uh, you know growing up as a child in a family that was very committed to uh, serve the country, to serve our homeland, and to be part of uh, the on one hand the struggle for our independence, and uh, once we uh, established the state of Israel, to defend the state of Israel and to represent it uh, throughout the world. So it really came from my my home. And when I when I spoke to my my partner about this, who is Jewish as well, he said that the duty to serve in Israel is so uh, profuse that everyone has a sense of duty to serve in your country. Is that correct? Yes, I mean you know it's hard to speak uh, for everyone. <laughs> That's true. But uh, but but uh, yeah, look, it's um, Israel is a unique country, and the circumstances. Uh, uh, that we live in are, are also unique. And so in the environment where we live at, um, yes, I mean, this is part of our resilience as a, as, as a people. We, uh, we, we know that we need to serve. We would like to serve. It's a honor to serve the country. And I think it's true for everyone, or almost everyone, everyone in Israel, yes. You are the very first sitting ambassador that I've had on the show. I've had ambassadors on, so I've never had the opportunity to ask this question in a more a timely fashion because you were just, uh, you gave your credentials to the governor general in December. You were appointed last July. You are one year into your term in some sense because you were appointed last July. But what is the process to become an ambassador of Israel to Canada? Is it just a phone call from the foreign ministry? Because for my, for my listeners who might not know, what is the process? Is it something that you have to apply for in Israel to become the ambassador? Or was this just an uh, appointment out of the blue for you? So it's a great question, Chris. Uh, there are two possible ways to get um, uh, appointed as ambassador. One is to serve um, in the foreign ministry as a career diplomat. And then you get to be appointed, um, you know, uh, every now and then to different posts. The other way, which is my way, the other way, uh, is being a, po a political appointee, as we say. And this is a, a special appointment that the prime minister, the foreign minister, uh, appoints someone whom um, they trust uh, to one of the most important um, posts that, they, you know, according to their view, they, they see Canada as a very important, uh, uh, you know, post for, for Israeli diplomacy, for Israeli diplomats. And so I'm a political appointee. I was a member of the Israeli parliament uh, and uh, they um, appointed me the minister of foreign affairs. A foreign minister appointed me um, as a political appointee to serve in Canada. So, you know, I, I, I belong to, to that, to the political appointees group. <laughs> so when you took the role, because I'm assuming you had to accept it because you, you don't just get randomly put into this position. Did they, out, did the prime minister or the foreign ministry talk to you and say, this is what we're looking for as your role in Canada. And this is what we're hoping that you uh, grow in this role as ambassador to Canada for Israel. So uh, the foreign minister, who is now also the prime minister of Israel, Yair Lapid, yeah. he appointed me. And I had uh, many opportunities uh, when we served together in the parliament. Before I, I was appointed here, I was a member of the parliament. So when I was in the parliament, I was a member of the Defense and Foreign Affairs Committee, and I, I chaired a subcommittee on foreign policy and public diplomacy. And so during my service in the parliament, I had many opportunities uh, to work closely with uh, Lapid, with the prime minister now. Uh, and so, um, you know, I knew and I 
obviously still know what he's expecting me as an ambassador. It's, it's, not, it's not like you meet all of a sudden and then you have to define what, what being ambassador is like. I mean, we, we work together and, we, um, and, and so we know each other and we trust each other. And, uh, and, and, and so, you know, I'm, I, and of course, once he, uh, he announced and he told me that he's appointing me, uh, we met again and we, we spoke more specifically about my post in Canada. But in general terms, uh, I, I'm in this field, and and uh, you know I'm, I'm experienced in the field, and and, and the prime minister um, knows me and have seen me uh, being active in Israel's foreign affairs uh, from a long time ago. So I, I've tried to do my research on yourself, and you've given a few interviews, and I've watched all of them, but I've also read some of your social media posts, and you you you've put out a, a grocery list of uh, items that you want to accomplish as ambassador to Canada. What is the top priority for yourself in this role? Because this is a new role for yourself. You have worked in consular general offices across the United States, but this is the first time as ambassador. So what do you hope to bring to this role as ambassador? Because while you're still relatively new into the role, you've, you've got about a year under your belt now. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, um, I have to say that the, the, the bread and butter of diplomacy is to maintain and to strengthen um, the political uh, and the cultural affairs between the countries. So Canada and Israel are, also, are already very close friends. And, um, and so uh, I, I would maintain and, and strengthen the relations between Israel and Canada at, at all levels and at all fields. But if you ask me to be more specific on priorities, I would say that there is a huge potential in cooperating um, around innovation and te te technology, you know, technologies, new cutting edge technologies, uh, research and development. And so Canada is leading in some of these uh, uh, fields in the world and Israel is, is obviously leading, you know, Israel is a spearhead for, of, of innovation for good, I would say. And so to partner and to create partnerships between Israel and Canada around innovation uh, that would uh, provide solutions to global challenges. Uh, it's, and, and it would be, and, and it is uh, one, of, one of the highest priorities uh, that I define myself. So it's not, it's not only a grocery list, it's something that, you know, it's a commitment and the passion to uh, provide um, together with, with the Canadians, with, uh, with Canadian friends uh, and with the Canadian government solutions to burning uh, challenges and problems that the, the entire world is facing. Well, in, on the uh, in, uh, embassy's website, the Israeli emb embassy's website for Canada, you do mention green energy, water conservation, and science innovation as three areas that you're looking at for that innovation. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you've seen so far in your time here? I know we've had a little bit of a lockdown with COVID-19, so you haven't been able to travel much, but you were out here in Calgary just this month in July. Uh, I did see you at the uh, prime minister's event. I, if I would have, I would have walked over and said, hi, if I would have put two and two together, but I, the face looks familiar. I just couldn't put the name to it. So what have you seen and what have you heard when it comes to innovation, when you're going across Canada, talking to companies that might be able to do that partnership with Israel and Canada? So, so Calgary is, uh, is wonderful and it's a wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, no, I just came back from, you know, I'm still under the, the inspiration, the stampede and, the, and, and, you know, the wonderful time I had in Calgary, but, uh, but, but, but Calgary is also a, a wonderful example, uh, uh, you know, uh, in order to answer your question, because when I was there, I met with uh, Premier Kenny, and uh, and I suggested, and 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 I'm very grateful because he accepted my 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 suggestion, and uh, I suggest suggested to build a partnership between Israel and Alberta um, in the field of energy technologies. So, when you think about it potential partnerships, you know, each side would bring its assets to it. So when you think Alberta is a, is a superpower in terms of energy, right? I mean, not exa ex exaggerated, I mean, it's, 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 uh, yep. it's one of the leading. So um, there's so much, you know, energy and Alberta is selling energy to the entire world. 
And Israel is leading in uh, developing um, cutting edge technologies for renewable energies. So I suggested to Premier, I said, listen, let's, um, let's get together and you know, I'll bring some Israeli companies that uh, have developed uh, those cutting edge uh, technologies of renewable energy and you guys will bring yours and together and, and, and you know, we can partner on, on in that field. Uh, and this is an example. So we, we're going, actually we're going to create a, a bilateral agreement uh, between Israel and Alberta uh, around this field, which all initiatives, you know, business to business, uh, business to government, government to government, uh, research and development, scientists, experts, environment, you know, activists and organizations, uh, everyone would be and everything would, would be able to get under that kind of umbrella that we're building, which is the strategic uh, agreement between Israel and Alberta. Okay, so this is an example of how to take an idea and assets of the two, two countries and, and, and get them together and, and create a partnership. Okay, another example, if you ask me, would be, um, you know, we, I, since I'm here, I um, identify that uh, there is a challenge that has to do with, uh, with um, water. Uh, clean water to, you know, um, especially with in, in the indige indigenous communities. Uh, and and we, know we have so much respect for the indigenous communities. We would like to learn from them, you know, at the cultural level and many, many at many levels. We also feel that uh, we may offer some solutions maybe to, to that challenge of, because there are Israeli companies that have developed and leading in the world in developing technologies for clean water. So we arranged a showcase of 12 Israeli companies that were to, to, to some, some of the chiefs of the indigenous communities in Saskatchewan, for example. And we are connecting the, the, the challenge to potential solutions. So that is what I'm speaking about when, when we speak about uh, uh, innovation and partnership around innovation. It's, it's always that, it's, it's to identify challenges, to get potential solution and connect them and, and create uh, an ecosystem where both sides and sometimes many more sides, you know, outside Israel and Canada uh, would be able to enjoy and to benefit out of our partnership uh, as well. How, how is the partnership between Canada and Israel perceived in Israel? Because from here in Canada, it seems like we are a very tight knit community and Israel is our friend. We've been, our, uh, we've been an ally to Israel for 70, I want to say 73, 74 years now. But in Israel, does Israel look at Canada for guidance? Does Israel look to Canada for partnerships, for bilateral relationships? What is the relationship like with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and uh, your friend, the Prime Minister of Israel right now? Or have they met? Do you know? Because I'm assuming you'd be in that conversation. Yes. So, so first of all, I would say all of the above. You know, so. <laughs> I love when um, people just say that. All of the above. Awesome, man. Fascinating. No. So, so, so seriously. Now, um, we Israelis perceive Canada as one of the best friends of Israel in the world, and rightly so. Canada is a very good friend. It starts with the values. We share similar, if not ident almost identical, values. Uh, we are committed to liberal dem democracy, to freedom of, of speech, to freedom of press, to freedom of religion. All these, all these values that Canadians are committed to, not only committed to maintain, but also committed to fight for, are values that we are committed to fight for as well. You know, we're the only, the, the only liberal democracy in the Middle East. Very challenging uh, neighborhood, I would say. Um, and, 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 so, and, and so I think that Canada appreciates Israel being a liberal democracy being committed to the same values. So it starts from there. It's not, you know, sometimes when you look at, at, at the relationship between countries, you, you may think about uh, common interests, right? Yeah. This is a national interest and therefore countries get together. Between Israel and Canada is much more, it's much deeper than just national political interests. It's values. We share values. And based on those values, uh, a friendship, a true friendship has been created long time ago, as you said. And so uh, Israelis are aware of it, Israelis are grateful for it, and Israelis, um, you know, we, we thank Canada for being such a, a good friend. And, and I know and I feel uh, that 
Canada uh, appreciates is grateful for, uh, um, uh, for, you know, to, for Israel for the same for the same thing. So we're talking about a, a true partnership and true friendship between the two countries. Now, I, I'm going to do a little bit of a shameless plug for you here, and you're going to be able to answer this question for me. But sure. my, my partner and I are looking to head over to Israel in the fall. So we're, we're looking to go back, uh, go to Israel, tour Israel, because he wants to show me some of the great uh, historic locations. And I want to ask the ambassador of Israel to Canada what his favorite spot in Israel is. So that way we make sure we stop there and take in the sights and sounds of Israel if we were to go. And this is for anyone who's potentially going to Israel in the next few months, a few years. Where, where should people stop? You know, it's like asking me which one of my children I like, I like, I like the most. Well, right? if you want to ask that question <laughs> next, I can, Ambassador. <laughs> um, okay, so first of all, let me, do you have a year to travel in Israel at least? Then I will be able to, to answer it seriously. I, I can give you a year if you want. <laughs> Um, there are so many, so many favorite spots. Um, okay, so it depends. And it's not that I'm uh, avoiding or giving you, returning you the question. But if you go to Israel, you need to ask yourself, what would you, I mean, there's so much to see and so much to experience in Israel, really, seriously. And so first of all, I think you should ask yourself, what would be in the limited time that you have the most, uh, you know, the, the, the most not popular, but the most interesting thing for you to say. Is it a history and religion? Yes. Then I would direct it. Okay. <laughs> if it's a fun and parties, Israel can offer that too. Uh, <laughs> by the way, you can combine between. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Two <laughs> birds, one stone. Let's do it. <laughs> so let's start by saying that uh, I, I would suggest that you, you will not miss Jerusalem be in Jerusalem, follow, you know, go to the old city, go to um, holy sites, uh, take a, a, a tour guide that would go, would, would take you through the history and, you know, the amazing and the fascinating history of, of, of Jerusalem. But also don't miss Tel Aviv on the seashore, uh, a, 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 you know, a city also with a lot of history, but uh, very, you know, we call it a non-stop city because it, it, it's so dynamic and, and, you know, very cosmopolitan, lots of parties and, and cafes and restaurants and culture. So I would, I would, I would you know, first of all, uh, turn Tel Aviv and, and Jerusalem to be uh, two pillars of your visit in Israel. And then you can go everywhere and see so much history, so much, uh, you know, it's fascinating. Um, and I can tell you that you will feel very secure when you when you travel throughout Israel. Um, and, and, and really, and, and the fall is a great time to go because it's right after the, the heat of the summer, right before the winter. By the way, the winter, our winter is not a winter that most of the Canadians, Canadians have in mind. Uh, <laughs> How was your first winter here? I've got to ask, and I, I apologize for jumping around, but you, you, you set me up for that question. How was your first winter here? <laughs> So everyone warned me that the winter is going to be the most challenging thing in Canada, maybe. I have to say that I really liked it. Okay. Uh, in Israel, you know, I, I like, you know, for example, I like um, uh, ski, right? Snow, uh, downhill ski. So in Israel, if I wanted to go for skiing, I had to go, I had to fly to Europe. Here, if I want to go ski, and I do, then I go 20, 25 minutes um, drive from my, my, my residence and and and, all, and there's a, a hill where I can go with, take my child to ski. So uh, I really like the winter. I think the secret is uh, if you if you if you're going out, if you're active in the winter, then you will enjoy it. If you are hiding from it, you'll suffer probably. So I'm not hiding. I'm, I like it. That's awesome. I'm glad and I'm glad that you've enjoyed your stay here so far. But I want to turn to a, a very uh, relevant subject and it's kind of a we had the fun now let's talk about the serious um we are living in a more divided world right now we are living in a more polarized world with the rise of social media with the rise of online hate and and i will i won't be uh, unabashed saying this the rise of anti-semitic views how do we how do we stamp that out? How do we quash anti-Semitic views in this country, in this world? Because I did a show recently where I was attacked because I asked the question, what is a Zionist? Because 
I was accused of being a Zionist and I didn't know what the word was. And I had a guest on the show and we had an online discussion and the hate that I got of being uh, like, you're a Zionist, you're pro-Israel, you're going to burn in heck for doing that. From your stance as the ambassador of Israel to Canada, how do we stamp out anti-Semitic hate in today's society when we are so polarized? Yes, I think uh, it is very important uh, question and very important um, subject. Look, it, it, obviously, this is the the most challenging, um, uh, you know, phenomenal thing that uh, we we are facing. Not only we, when I say we, it's not only us Israelis, and not even only us the Jewish people, but uh, as you said, you know, it's uh, the, the people who are not part of this. Uh, of, of this propaganda and so before I answer let me let me try to identify why is it so difficult to combat it part of the reason maybe the main reason why is it hard is because in a way the people who conduct and and and, and you know who lead that anti-semitic uh, uh you know uh, campaigns uh do it in a very sophisticated way sometimes they, they hide behind um, terms uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, present uh, so-called values, uh, you know, they can hide behind um, legitimate, I would say, uh, um, you know, policies and ideas, uh, although their, their, their real agenda, the, the, the unstated goals are not legitimate at all. They, they would like to spread hate and racism. Uh, and anti-Semitism, but they do it in a way that would sound soft and as if they are part of the mainstream, and they are not, right? And it's very easy through the social media to hide behind uh, uh, platforms that are that seem to be very legitimate, and then use them uh, and leverage them in order to convey, um, you know, to spread hate. Um, and so, so my first part to uh, as an answer to your question would be, we need to expose that. If we need, first of all, to expose that. We need to differentiate between a legitimate criticism um, or argument and hate and racism and anti-Semitism. It's not easy. It's not easy to expose. It's not easy to, but, but that's the first thing we need to do. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to cooperate. We need to communicate with each other. You know, so all the people, organizations, groups, you know, governmental units here and in Israel and everywhere around the world who are worried and, and committed to combat hate and anti-Semitism should cooperate and communicate. And we should, not take, should, we should not take it for granted that each one of us is doing, uh, you know, the right thing uh, unless we do it in a comprehensive way by communicating and coordinating things uh, between us, among us. So that's one thing. And then it has to uh, be done through education. So this is a long term, uh, both by the way, formal and informal education. And it has to be done by uh, short term and, and, and you know, um, midterm, I would say, strategies of um, proactive combating uh, anti-Semitism and, and, and spread of hate. And the way to do it, is by um, having the, the right arguments, the right story. I think that our story is a true story. I mean, ours is all these people who are against anti-Semitism. And we need to, uh, once we exposed who, I mean, how they do it and what is the methodology, uh, we, need to, we need to really monitor it uh, in a systematic way and say, this is unacceptable. This is should not be part of, uh, uh, and 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 so we need to be proactive, not only uh, reactive. Proactive meaning we should uh, initiate, uh, exposing, monitoring, coordinating among ourselves, and fighting against it uh, with all the tools that, with all the the legitimate right, the uh, uh, tools that we have, social media. Uh, traditional media, education, formal education, informal education, conferences, think tanks, policy recommendations, legislation, very important in parliaments, right? It has to be coordinated, has to be, uh, has to be comprehensive. 
I'm going to ask a question, and I did not prepare you this for this. And I, if you don't want to answer it, I do uh, appreciate you accepting the question. But you've been here for over seven months now since you came to Canada, and you were you get you present your credentials to Governor General uh, Mary Simon. During your time here, have you felt anti-Semitic hate? Personally, you know, I, I'm again. I arrived seven months ago, so. Personally, uh, yeah, I should say uh, that you know, I on one hand, I'm um, I, I'm a, um, an official, you know, uh, representative of the government, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm not that much in, you know, I'm not in campuses, and I'm not, and still, I have to tell you that I did. Wow. That I did, and and where did I see it? I see it in uh, in demonstrations outside and in uh, signs outside on the streets. Well, I just yeah. sorry, I apologize. Continue. No, no, no. So, so, um, so, so again, yes, it, 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 you know, it's it's everywhere, unfortunately, right? But um, you know, it, there are waves of of threats coming out of anti-Semitism, and so I'm not saying that there is any wave at the moment which is a, has a critical mass of it, but you can see it. And I want to again thank the Canadian uh, uh, government and, and the Canadian and the Jewish community and other communities, not only Jewish communities, who together are committed to fight it. And I thank you for answering that question. I, I apologize for putting you on the spot there. I just thought I had asked the question because you 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 spoke so eloquently beforehand about the answer. But I want to end on this uh, last question here, if possible, before we start wrapping up here, Your Excellency, and that is the future. You are now in this role for seven months. You've been in Canada for seven months. You, the lockdowns, the well, if you call them lockdowns, the COVID mandates are sort of easing. You can travel, you can get out to different provinces now. What does the future hold for the ambassador of Israel to Canada look like for the second part of 2022 and 2023? Um, I think that... Um we started when i came here i started to implement my my agenda my plan which is creating more and more projects and partnerships for partnerships and i think that the future the second half i'm still far from the second half of my <laughs> post but when i get to the second half of the post then hopefully i would be able to start uh not only create but implement um and and maybe even um maybe even get some results meaning for example we spoke earlier about the partnership on energy technology and on, on, on water um then uh in the future i hope and i believe that we'll be able to see uh to see it in numbers in figures uh in a canadian economy and in an israeli economy you know to enlarge the trade uh, the amount of trade and extent of trade between uh, Israel and Canada. So, um, in other words, uh, I'm starting many things now at the beginning of my post, and I would like to see some results uh, at my second half of, uh, of of the post. And uh, and and you know, it's good that some, uh, maybe many of the things which I'm starting are measurable, so we can. You know, some of the things are not like uh, you know friendships, partnerships, in a way. But but even friendship and partnerships, you can, there are ways to to evaluate, to assess, and to to manage the success of it. So uh, it's very important for me to develop tools to measure and to get uh, you know the results that I, we will be able to get out of what we're doing here. And what do you what do you personally hope to accomplish? Because Everyone says, if you come to Canada, you have to do the stampede, which you've done. Is there anything else as a tourist of Canada, as an ambassador to Canada, that you want to make sure? Do you want to go out to Nova Scotia, uh, take the ferry across the uh, way to PEI? Is there things on the bucket list that the ambassador of Israel is looking forward to accomplishing this year? <laughs> yes, to be honest, yes. First of all, I'd like to learn as much as I can. And we have so much to learn from Canada. It's a great country, great people, great culture, great history. So this, I would like to accomplish that. It will take me time, you know, to go ev everywhere to travel. And when I travel throughout Canada, I like to learn, not only to enjoy. So that's one thing. The other thing is, more specifically, uh, if I can come out of this post uh, 
knowing how to play hockey without breaking my legs or my my my, my you know any bones in my I, I would really, you know, I, I think that that would be a great achievement. <laughs> well, if, if you're back in Calgary, I think there's a few people who would love to take you out for a game of shinny. We'll throw the sticks in the middle and we'll just take it easy on the old ambassador. Okay. Um, Your Excellency, I want to thank you so much for doing this because I, I know you're a busy man and I want to make sure that you get to your next meeting. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. And I'm going to leave on this note and I'm going to get, pass it over to you for a few minutes. What do you want my listeners to know about your role, about Israel and Canadian uh, partnership that we haven't talked about yet? And then we'll wrap up. Um, I would like the listeners um, to assume that, uh, that the partnership and the friendship between Israel and Canada is very strong and we are still, uh, you know, we, we, we're working on even make it even stronger. Um, and I would like to encourage the listeners to come and travel and visit Israel. Uh, as I do to my Israeli friends, I encourage them to come and visit Canada. There's nothing like, nothing like people to people, uh, living bridge by getting people, um, bringing together and let them experience the real thing. So uh, I invite all the listeners to come and visit Israel. You're so welcome. And thank you so much, Chris, for the opportunity and for hosting me. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here with you. Well, thank you, Your Excellency. And I want to remind everyone, get out from behind social media for at least 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It does make our society better. It makes our democracy better. And heck, it just makes us a great people. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, Keep talking.